Welcome to the Financial Freedom Podcast, where we interview remarkable people and share strategies for mastering money and living a meaningful life. With your host, Grant Sabatier, creator of Millennial Money and author of Financial Freedom, a proven path to all the money you will ever need. Hey everyone, this is Grant Sabatier and this is the Financial Freedom Podcast. This is the first episode and I'm very excited to have a special guest, my father. I'm back home in my childhood home here hanging out with my parents for a couple of days and really it's my father who inspired this entire financial journey. I remember one of my earliest memories being a kid when he would say money is freedom. I remember that, you know, gosh, I'm probably five, six years old uh, the first time that you told me that. And it's pretty funny now, you know, 25 plus years later uh, that I've written a book called Financial Freedom and that I've spent so much time really trying to think about it and figure it out. So where'd that come from, money is freedom? What does that mean to you? Uh, Money is freedom means to me that if you have enough money, you can do whatever you want. Uh, You know, my goal has always been uh, to have freedom uh, and have enough money that if I decided I didn't want to work, if I wanted to go live at the beach for the rest of my life, or if I wanted to take a road trip or take a few weeks off, or if I had a boss or somebody that was uh, mistreating me and I didn't like working for them, I, I could just go. Uh, basically, you just have the, the, the freedom to just do whatever you choose to do. You're not tied down to anything. Uh, you know, don't have house payments and car payments and credit card payments and, you know, a lot of consumer debt or any other kind of debt. Because what you're doing when you have a lot of debt and you're working to pay those debts and you're a lot of people work and they just try to make ends meet is you don't really have any freedom. You know, you're be, your life is being dictated by the people that you owe the money to. So to me, the financial freedom or, or the money is freedom is that my goal was always to try to, you know, I grew up with meager means and my goal was always to try to have enough money that I could do what I wanted when I chose to do that. No, that's a. I appreciate that extra context. You know, as a five or six year old, hearing that, you know, it really stuck with me. But it's really hard to understand what it means. And I remember just growing up, how you were very thoughtful in, uh, you know, teaching me about money, but also in your own approach to money. I mean, you've always been, you know, extremely frugal. Can you talk a little bit about uh, where your money views come from? You mentioned, you know, briefly, you know, growing up, you know, with meager means. Um, you know, I know you had some challenges just growing. Up. Can you talk a little bit about uh, you know what it was like growing up? Well, I think uh, what really helped me to get my respect for money is I grew up with my grandparents. I didn't grow up with a father and a mother. My grandparents took care of me, and my grandfather was a French immigrant, and and he always worked menial jobs and tried to make money and and tried to make a living and put food on the table, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they never had any money. They they were always struggling. They were borrowing money periodically at you know, from finance companies at high interest rate. And, you know, and as a result of that, at one point in time, they ended up getting a divorce and losing their home. And that that always resonated with me that I didn't really want to take that approach. Uh, So I know they, you know, in hindsight, I think they did the best they could. They loved me. And, you know, I have a lot of respect, admiration, love for them. Uh, But I wanted to do something else. So one of the things that I kind of clued in on early, I thought, at at least at my time in the 70s, was uh, to get a good education. And I thought that might I thought, of course, that would help me to get a good job where I could start building financial freedom more effectively. But I've always always worked uh, two or three jobs when I was a young kid. You know, in fifth grade, I delivered 100 newspapers plus a day. I worked in a laundromat, cleaning laundromats. And, and the thing that I did is I didn't spend that money. I held on to that money. So can you tell me a little bit about the jobs that you had really kind of growing up and through, you know, high school and college. You seem kind of like the original side hustler. You had a lot of different gigs going from, you know, flipping mobile homes to, I think, even playing pool. You know, can you talk a little bit about some of those jobs? Yeah, I've always had, uh, I've always worked a couple different jobs at a time. I, you know, when I was younger, I delivered newspapers, as I said earlier, and I worked in a corn-operated laundry. I used to go in and sweep the floors and clean the washers out and walk and mop the floors, et cetera. You know, I did that. Uh, I worked in a job corps training center uh, when I was in college, and uh, they gave me a deal where I could go in at 10 o'clock on Friday night, and I'd work until 
3 o'clock Monday morning, and then I'd get out and I'd go to class. And sometimes in the afternoon at Indiana University, I'd be in the, the student union sitting in a chair sleeping, trying to catch a couple hours or an hour of sleep in between classes because uh, I took a full load. And I, I graduated from college in 27 months uh, with a bachelor's degree. Uh, but I've always had you know several different jobs, like I said. You know, I've cut firewood and sold it. Uh, you know, I've cut people's grass. Um, I cleaned uh, the offices at, real late in the evening where my wife used to work as, an, as a publisher for a magazine. Uh, just anything to make a buck and, you know, try to make a buck and hang on to a buck and that type of thing. So, Can you talk a little bit about, you know, I know kind of, you know, you were the first person in your, you know, in our family to go to college, you know, on, on your side of the family. And I know you got quite a bit of pressure about it being a waste and, you know, can you talk a little bit about some of those challenges and why you actually decided to go to college? I went to college because I thought it, I thought that uh, a better education would help me to get a better job where I could ha- uh, have a more comfortable lifestyle and, you know, at some point financial freedom. Uh, yeah, I got some slack when I went to college, you know, that it was a waste of time and why would I want to waste my money and spend my money. Uh, basically, when I went to college, I, I went to college by borrowing money uh, on student loans and uh, I paid a student loan for close to 10 years, $134.10 a month. Uh, when I went to college, it was $28 a credit hour. So it was a lot less, a lot less money than it is now, but it was still a lot of money to me at the time. Uh, but I just felt that the college, you know, would give me a leg up on the job market, but also give me some personal enrichment, and it would help me to kind of look at the world maybe a little differently in, in a lot of other areas. Uh, I was pretty sheltered. I grew up in a small Midwestern rural town, and I just, I, you know, I just wanted something else. Can you talk a little bit, so you wanted something else, you wanted to get out, and then, you know, you eventually made the big jump when I was six months old, you moved from Indiana to Washington, D.C. Can you talk a little bit about why you made that move? It seems like you've really taken a lot of steps throughout your life to push against the grain, and um, you, despite, you know, growing up quite, you know, poor and in a rural area, you went to college and then you came to the East Coast. Can you talk a little bit about, it seems like you've always had this desire for more and this desire to get out. Can you talk a little bit about what motivated that? Well, we came out to Washington uh, <clears throat> because we wanted a better life for us. Uh, we wanted a better life for you uh, to try to give you more opportunity, which I think that we were able to do here. Uh, better education system, uh, a lot of people, more people with open minds about things and thinking about all kinds of things. It's quite different from the way I grew up. And if someone would have said to me when I was growing up, this is where I would end up and I would be doing what I'm doing here, uh, I would have never believed them. Uh, but it was, you know, I, I think that overall it, it's, it's been a good thing. It's helped me, uh, you know, to expand my mind. And, and I, I've had a lot of opportunities here that I wouldn't have had if I'd have stayed in rural Indiana. So what does enough mean to you? Well, it's not really enough to me. As a, uh, it's, a, it's not a dollar amount. It may not be the same dollar amount that it is to you or to anybody who's listening. Uh, you know, that people may think that financial freedom for them might be $40 million. That's by far not what I was thinking. I, you know, it's, it's a lot, lot less for me. Uh, financial freedom to me was a number that, that you know, I have enough money, you know, to, to maintain me throughout my life, uh, the, the standard of living that, I'm, that I want and I'm comfortable to. And as we mentioned earlier in the podcast, uh, you know, I'm a fairly frugal guy, so I don't long for a lot of things. I don't buy an $80,000 Mercedes or anything like that. So I, I think financial freedom and that goal of how much money is a real personal goal. Uh, and that's something that's going to be different for most people. But it doesn't have to be a several million dollars by, by any means. It may, it may be a million dollars or less than a million dollars, and it may be allocated in investments where you can have a certain amount of money per month that you want to live. You know, there's a number that I, that, that I have that I'm going to use uh, that I'm going to have per month to live on. Plus, I'll have a cushion, of course. Did you ever want to make more? Did you ever think about maybe pursuing a different career path or getting a different degree or just going after more? Uh, not really. No, if that's something I wanted to do, I probably would have done it. Uh, the people, obviously, that want to make 
a lot a lot of money they get into career paths where they can do that um, you know their their goal is to make as much money as they can make uh to me that's kind of fruitless you know it's just if if i had done that i'd probably end up giving a lot of it away uh because that's not the kind of lifestyle i live you know that's not what makes me happy one of the things i've always wondered and i i don't think i've ever asked you this uh directly is um you know, we live in a world where people are really sort of obsessed with material possessions. You know, people want the big houses and the nice cars or the boats or, you know, the shiny things or the shiny watches. And, you know, why don't you want those things or why weren't, the, weren't those sort of trappings of success and, and wealth, uh, you know, maybe appealing to you? They've never been attractive to you. I think that's a good question. It probably has a couple different answers. One being, obviously, that I wasn't exposed to those when I was a kid. And the second, that I've seen people and I've had friends who have gotten into those things and they've gotten trapped. Uh, they've either gotten trapped with a lot of debt or a lot of stress or both. And, and they just haven't you know, been able to live their lives to the fullest. And I think that, you know, I think that probably more important than things or our experiences. I think you need to get out and do some things. And, and I'm kind of winding down at a point in my life now where I'm going to, to probably start doing more traveling and trying to experience some things that, that, that I've been saving all that money for and being frugal with over the years. So, but, but I just haven't really felt the need to have uh, new Rolexes and new cars and expensive houses. Uh, my wife and I have lived in the same house for 30 years. You know, it's where Grant grew up. You know, he was like th- two years old, I think, when we moved here or something. So, and the house is nice. It's, it's fine for us. Uh, I drive, uh, my car is a 2004, so it's a 14-year-old car. So, yeah, I just haven't, the, the, the trappings of wealth, if you will, just haven't really appealed to me. So how did you learn about money? What was that process like? Well, I think that, you know, I think I, you know, I picked it up over the years and I picked it up from various sources. Obviously, you know, you run into people who become mentors and they tell you different things about the way they handle money. And early on, I, I had a guy, there was a guy that I worked for and and he had a, an MBA from Indiana University, and and he and he explained to me a little bit about money and how money was freedom in a sense. But he uh, he was the first guy in in the state of Indiana and, and maybe in the country to own corn operated laundry machines. And he uh, he started those, and he was a businessman all his life. He bought rentals and sold them. And, and you know, a lot of times you just you know you see people like that, and and you know that you just become in awe of them and how they hold on to that and how they do that. Uh, one other thing that I did is I read a book by Andrew Tobias that was very good. It kind of explained money to me. I'm not like a PhD as far as money. It's just a lot of common sense, I think, that I've used and put into practice over the years. And, you know, one of the big things is obviously you don't, you know, don't spend more than what you make. And one of the things, you know, I've always kind of gotten on you for at least over the last five years is just kind of keeping so much money in cash. Can you talk a little bit why you like keeping money in cash? Uh, I like cash. I've always liked cash. I never liked checks. I never liked credit cards. Uh, I I think, to me, the cash just seems more tangible than a credit card or an investment. Uh, I like having a certain percentage of my money liquid in case I need it. Uh, If maybe I want to buy a beach house or something, I've been thinking about maybe getting a place, uh, you know, to kind of wind down and get out of the hustle and bustle. And, you know, kind of spend a lot of the remaining years, you know, I like the ocean a lot. I like fishing. And, uh, you know, I'm getting a little tired of sitting traffic around the city here around Washington, D.C. Uh, so I just, I don't know, I just always like cash. I always liked cash uh, from the beginning when I used to go collect money from those papers, you know, 45 cents a week. And of that 45 cent, cents a week, I got to keep 20 cents per customer. And uh, I always liked cash. Yeah, no, it's really funny. We were actually, uh, we just came back from a week at the beach hanging out together. And, uh, you know, we wanted some beach chairs. And we were debating uh, whether we should rent the beach chairs for, it was like $80 for a couple of beach chairs and an umbrella, or whether we should go buy them. So we went to the, we decided to buy them and we went to the Dollar General store. And, and we were just blown away that these beach chairs were $30. We thought they should be like $10. And we probably spent 30 minutes in this Dollar General store debating debating whether we should buy these $30 beach chairs and this $9 beach umbrella. Uh, it, was, it was really funny. I really, really appreciated that. You know, I've thought a lot about, you know, while writing the book about growing up, 
um, and just a lot of the lessons that were instilled in me about money. And I think the biggest one is definitely that, you know, frugality doesn't mean pinching pennies. It means not wasting. And, you know, I never felt like, you know, even in back being a kid, when I know, you know, we didn't necessarily maybe have a lot of money, I never felt deprived, always saw opportunity, you know, really appreciate, you know, you instilling that lesson. Here you are, you know, you've, uh, you know, been working hard, you're, you're getting, you know, close to retirement, uh, you know, the, the next couple years, what are you excited about next as you, as you get closer to retirement here? Uh, I'm excited about just, just being able to uh, not have to get up and go to work in the morning and, and not have any such schedule. Uh, I still plan on doing some work, uh, maybe some volunteer work. I'd like to, to do like 50-50, just have you know, 50% of my time. You know, I can read or work out or, or whatever I want to do. And then the other 50% maybe do some volunteer work or something like that. As, uh, as far as leaving my job, um, that's going to be difficult because I have a lot of friends there and there are a lot of people that I've worked with, a core group of us of six or eight people that we've all worked together 25 plus years. So those people are my co-workers, but they're also my friends. I know them. I know their children. Uh, and I genuinely like them. They're like my almost like my second family. So it'll be difficult transitioning from that, but, but I'm going to take the 50-50 rule. You know, I've read a couple of retirement books on you know, what to do and what's supposed to make you happy in retirement. So I think uh, I need some intellectual pursuit, so I'll do that, and then I'll do some traveling. So now that you're getting ready to transition into retirement, you'd mentioned you want to teach yourself how to spend money a little bit. Can you talk about what you mean by that? Well, I've, uh, I've actually been trying to do that the last few years. My wife and I have lived in this, like I said earlier, we've lived in the same house for 30 years, and, uh, we, and it needed some work done on it. And my wife has uh, asked me, you know, can we do this work? Can we do the remodeling and, and the add-on, update the kitchen, the bathrooms, and all that, you know? And, and all I'm seeing is dollar signs. But then I'm looking, and I'm thinking, <laughs> well, you know, I've worked hard. My wife has worked hard, and we've got plenty of money. We'll be fine throughout our lives. So... Uh, you know, we've have a, we have one child, a strong, independent son, and uh, who I'm talking with here. Uh, but so I thought, well, let's just do it. You know, we've worked hard. Let's 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 uh, you know let's add on to our house and and do it and, and enjoy the rest of it rest of it while we're living here. And you know, who knows? Maybe we'll have some grandchildren to come visit, etc. So so we decided to do that. And then you know now I've you know I take more time off from work now, and I'll take some vacations and. And, uh, you know, if I want a new suit suit or sport coat or something, you know, I don't have a problem going and buying two or three sport coats, whereas before I would not do that. So one of the things, you know, just spending the past week with you, I know we got a lot of chance to chat. And I'm always amazed that, you know, for such a quiet guy, uh, just the depth of, uh, you know, your thinking and your insights and really your, your curiosity. Um, any kind of things you would have done differently now looking back? You know, I think that hindsight's always twenty twenty, and when you look back, there are always things that you could and and you, and you would do differently. But uh, the other side of that is, I'm quite satisfied with the way things turned out and what I did do. Last question here: What do you think ultimately makes people happy, or how do they find what makes them happy? Obviously, like we touched on this earlier. Money is not going to make you happy. I think you need to need. I think you find happiness from personal satisfaction and a lot of different things. You know, whether it's making money or saving money or traveling or your job, uh, I think, you know, having a job that you enjoy, you can get a lot of satisfaction from that. Uh, but I don't think that you can buy yourself happiness or personal satisfaction. You know, money is just a tool. And, and that's that's all it is. It's like a car or anything else. You know, you need to have you need a car that's going to get you from point A to point B. You need to have enough money to get you from point A to point B. Hey, you know, I just can't thank you enough for all the lessons and the inspiration and the guidance. And I'm really excited to see uh, what you do in retirement and for that part of the journey. Thanks for being on the first episode of the podcast. Yeah, thank you, Grant. I wish you the best.